Check, check. I feel like I should be spitting bars with this thing. You're going to beatbox? Okay, here we go. Boots. Boots. I'm going to rap over this beat, okay? So keep it going. I'm here with Lori Boots. in this booth. Boots. And we're at Boots. HQ. Boots. We're just do Boots. it. Boots. Uninterrupted. Boots. Is <laughs> Well, Lori, thank you so much for making this happen and being here. We're super happy to have you. Thank you for having me. This is amazing. (laughs) You're fresh off the workout right now? I am fresh off the workout. I'm a little toasty, so. (laughs) (laughs) So let's take it back to the first time that you started really being introduced to to what it is to be a gymnast. Mm -hmm. How old were you? I was five years old. I remember actually sitting at home on my couch and I was watching TV. And I remember seeing two gymnasts on the balance beam. And I thought that they looked so cool. I couldn't tell. Like, I didn't know gymnastics was a thing at that age. I just, I remember seeing them flip. And I was like, oh, my God, they're ninjas. This is amazing. (laughs) (laughs) So I, you know, all jokes aside, I remember looking at the screen and telling my mom, you know, I want to be just like them. And she was like, okay. She put me in. And that was how I started. Nice. (laughs) And you were five years old. I was five, yeah. When did you realize that you were good? Like, this is something you wanted to pursue. So I started at five, I was competing and whatnot, and we entered a program at eight years old called TOPS. It's like Talent Mm -hmm. Opportunity Program, and you do a bunch of conditioning, and they rank you from, you know, best to weakest um, throughout the United States, and and when we got the scores back, I had come out in first, and I was like, oh, huh. (laughs) Wait, you were how old when you did that? I was eight, but it was in my age group. It wasn't, okay, you know, at nine years old, we did the program again, and I got invited to different national team camps because of the program and at that age I was like I think I want to go to the Olympics that would be a really really neat plan for my career and you went to the the summer Olympics summer Olympics in 2016 2016 but you were also part of the the fierce five in 2012 I was not part of it. Oh, you weren't part of it. I, so to compete at the Olympics, you have to be 16 or older. So in 2012, I was 12 years old. Oh my God. So I could not have gone. But at the same time, I'm really happy that I didn't go at 12. Because if you look at my videos from when I was 12, it was a little rough. It wasn't like it is right now. I'm pretty sure it probably wasn't rough. If anybody were to see these videos, they'd be like, you're a pro. You were born to do this. (laughs) You're so hard on yourself. (laughs) Well, my first uh, elite nationals at 12, I fell three times. Two were on oh, my wow. face. So it was a little rough. It was a little rough. <laughs> okay. So then in 2016, that's when you had your your debut. Yes. And how was that experience? That was amazing. It was, it was a dream that I had always wanted ever since I was a little girl. So right. the fact that it was actually happening was mind-blowing to me. And I just remember thinking, you know, I really have to take this all in because I don't know when I'll ever get this again. Yeah. I won't ever get the same experience anywhere else. So yeah. I remember just looking at everything and, and making sure I memorized all the colors and all the landmarks that I was seeing because it was right. so incredible. And also to meet all the different athletes, that was that was one of my favorite parts. What's the secret to taking care of your body when you're competing at the highest level? So let's take mm. it back to 2016. For me, I think I was telling this to the kids while we were working out today, yeah. I told them, you know, self-love and self-care is not selfish at all. Like, if you realize that you are physically tired, that is your body signaling simply that you just need a break, and it's okay to take that break for yourself. Mentally, if you're exhausted, it's okay to take a break from everything for a couple hours or a day or so and just take a deep breath. You have to give yourself time to recuperate because life moves really fast, and if you don't take that time to, yeah. to take a breather, it's just going to swipe right by you. So I love that. you got to take a breather. That's you got to really take it. a break. Yeah. That's the secret. Yeah. That's a good secret, Lori. Sometimes we all just need a little nap. <laughs> <laughs> by the way, I found out you're a fan of naps. Oh, you're a big fan of naps. Oh, yeah. I was reading some of your interviews, and one of them said, one of your secrets to success, the keys to <laughs> success, <laughs> is naps. Yeah. I mean... <laughs> That's good. Yeah, I, I'm just I hoping it that. doesn't get in the wrong context. But yes, no. it's naps. I mean, I'm one of those people that could sleep anywhere. You put me on the floor in the middle you of take anywhere. Advantage. I can take a nap. I can sleep on planes. I can sleep in the car. I can sleep on the top of the car. I can sleep. You're letting your body rest <laughs> and recharging is what you're telling me. Yeah, that's good. You're a professional at that. You're a professional at a lot of things. And speaking of professionals, so let's talk about the pros and cons of the physical strength that plays into your performance. So... As a gymnast, I'm sure when you were young and you were five and you were watching these guys in the balance beams, mm-hmm. right? There's a lot of physical strength that comes with that. What are some of the pros and cons um, that play into that performance? And then 
also how is that perceived once you've built Mm -hmm. that strength so i'm gonna see if i can list all the pros and then all the cons i might have to jump back and forth that's actually a really good idea i'm a a visual person look at this this is really helpful we're passing this there you go okay so we'll do pros Pros and cons i already misspelled how did i do that and cons okay so pros you get really strong, which is a beautiful thing. I think strong is so, so beautiful. And I think, well, I wouldn't call it a con, but like people will point it out, which is really weird. They'll be like, whoa, she's got guns. You know, (laughs) she's got arms for days, bro. Like that's too strong. You know, at 12 years old, that's so weird to hear. Like I'm just doing a sport that I love. Why do you have to point it out? And some people would say that in a positive way and you can always tell when it's done positively. And some people would be like, that's weird and that was really uncomfortable but I learned like this is my body I get to do whatever I want with it and if I want to be strong and healthy then I want to be strong and healthy and you have no right to tell me otherwise so you know what bro hit the weight room hit the weight room hit the weight room bro you You want arms like these (laughs) (laughs) you gotta train for arms like these arms for days (laughs) never skip arm day um another another pro I think would be confidence confidence in what way um confidence in the sense of I noticed that when I'm physically in my best shape then mentally I am a lot happier and I notice that the two are very much connected so mentally when I'm in a good place then suddenly it's like I have this urge to work out and eat healthier and and whatnot and then mentally if things get a little bit hard then I can see also like my body will react to it and so it's making sure that I can keep both extremely balanced for me but the confidence that I get when I feel fit and I feel good yeah then that doesn't match up to anything else it's unstoppable it makes you unstoppable for sure I'm trying to think of another con. They're really... You know what? If you have more pros than cons, that says a, a lot. That's a good thing. <laughs> That's a good thing. Actually, a con, um, which I wouldn't really call a con. I'd say it's just a part of life. Um, right after the Olympics, I went from training six, seven hours a day, six days a week, to not training at all. I, t- I had taken a, a big, big break. And that was really weird to see my body actually go through puberty. You know, what natural was in stages that break? of life. What did, what, what did you do in that break? And how long was the break? What's a long time? <laughs> so I'm I'm in the transition of taking a big break to coming back to gymnastics. I've taken a break for about two years now for oh, gymnastics, wow. which nice. is really like it's a lot for gymnastics or for a gymnast. Um, what did you do in those two years? I oh boy, I I got to do a show called Dancing with the Stars, which was no big deal. That was a lot of fun. No big deal. Oh, I have. I have things to weigh for that too. And it's not good or bad. It's just the difference between, because everybody's like, oh, well, you're a gymnast. Dancing must be extremely easy for you. Mm. (laughs) (laughs) Not quite. Gymnastics, you're barefoot. Dancing, you have heels, which I rolled my ankles a lot, which is totally fine. Gymnastics, I did it for 11 years. Right. Dancing, 11 weeks. (laughs) Gymnastics, competing solo, dancing with a partner, which was, I'm used to leading myself and flipping myself. So when someone else has to lead me, I was like, yeah not allowed to do that <laughs> <laughs> i'm leading but yeah. th- no that also makes you more than an athlete the <laughs> fact that you're able to also pick up another sport because dancing is a sport and, and i'm Absolutely. sure in those 11 weeks you learn that um you're able to to take on a new completely new sport right and now it's televised just like you know some of the, your competitions but not all of them mm-hmm. so what does being more than an athlete mean to you now you, you're taking on this show you also have some acting that you've done in the past. (laughs) So what does it mean to be more than an athlete to you? For me, being more than an athlete is exploring new opportunities for yourself and growing as a person. I think being more than an athlete, actually a good good quote that comes from my mom. um, When I was a little girl, I remember saying, there's so many things I want to try. I want to try gymnastics. I want to try running. I want to try swimming. I want to try dancing. I want to play music. I want to do all these different things. And I remember her saying, you know what? you're not Lori the gymnast, you're Lori who just so happens to be a gymnast, but you get to be even more than that if that's what you choose. So that's always stuck with me. I think being more than an athlete is not closing yourself off to one thing. Shout out to moms, man. Shout out to moms and shout outs to dads because they don't get enough credit. Let them know, Lori. (laughs) (laughs) Mom and dad love you. That's a good one. Yeah, I really like that quote. And it's so true because you've you've proven that in in many different cases. You're right now training and you're a gymnast and you're an actor and you're a dancer and <laughs> you're a human emoji and we won't get into the rest because the <laughs> list will go on but there's Thank also you. um a lot of young athletes that really look up to you 
right and you just celebrated a birthday by I the did. way happy belated birthday thank you you turned hashtag adulting <laughs> <laughs> hashtag adulting is perfect because you just turned 18 <laughs> <laughs> now i like it actually it's good not nothing really changed but i like it you've done <laughs> a lot more up until this point than a lot of us have oh it's you. you have an incredible resume and there's a lot of young athletes right that are, are looking up to you they're watching your every move they're following you on social media so what advice would you give to a young athlete a young gymnast my biggest advice would be not to quit when it gets really hard because they're in gymnastics the prime age is like 12 to 14 that's when all girls start to go through puberty they their level starts to get a little bit higher and that's when a lot of girls quit, tend to quit gymnastics I'm not sure what the average age for other sports are right. but I'm sure that there is an age where it does get really hard and the advice would be just not to quit when it gets really hard I remember there were different moments where I'd sit down with my mom and be like I'm done and she was like no <laughs> <laughs> but the only reason she did that was not because she was forcing me to be right. in this sport it was because she saw that the little girl in me who loved gymnastics and who wanted to start that, you know, her fire for the sport was not over yet at all. So it was just temporary. Yeah. So you're telling everyone to just do it. Absolutely. Just do it. Just stick with it. You're, you're going to be fine. Lori, thank you so much for stopping by. Thank you for you. having me. <laughs>